we now try to see how our model change uh, when we uh, modify one single parameter at a time. Uh, we do that for two reasons. The first one is that it really helps us to understand how the model works, how, which is the rule of the different parameters or the different assumptions that we, we made. The second reason why we do it is that it also starts to um, keep us close to the real world in the sense that some of the things we'll see, some of the modifications we do, we can interpret them to, uh, to event, to facts that happens in the real world and that make the param the, the, what we observe in terms of, for example, of price of the natural resources different than uh, what our simple model will say. And we can give some, uh, 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 some explanation for, for that. So we are going uh, to change one parameter at a time and see how the optimal solution uh, change when we change that parameters. So we are going to take five uh, cases. So first we'll uh, see the effect of an increase in the interest rate. We will then uh, see how um, the system change when we uh, increase the uh, stock of the uh, resource. Third case will increase the demand, the demand functions. We'll consider a, a reduction of, uh, uh, of the parameter K. So when we have a backstop te technology that has a lower uh, price and finally we'll uh, see an increase in the uh, resource extraction cost. For all of these uh, five cases we're not considering a change uh, across time so we started the model and then we change the parameter uh, at a given point in time but what we do really is that we compare the solutions as we had it before we have solutions of uh, a model where we changed that specific parameter. But at that point, in, bo in both cases, the original and the changed parameter, the parameters then remain constants across time. So the first case is an increase in the interest rate. So this is the original path of price across time and it grows till reaching uh, the choke price k. So what will happen if we increase the interest rate? Again, uh, you are invited uh, to stop the video if you want uh, before we, we advance or so to check your own uh, hypothesis with uh, then what we are going to, to see together. So the interest rate we saw that uh, given the hoteling rules, the, hotel, the, 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 the price, the growth rate of price is equal to our interest rate or discount rate, social discount rate. So if we increase here, we are going to increase also the growth rate of price. So you may be tempted to think that an effect could be something like this. Well, I'm going to tell you, tell you no, it's not like that. Again, you can pause and think about it. Okay, you may want to think, so that is something like this. We start lower and we increase the, the, the grow rate. But again, this is not uh, possible. And here, really, we can see that in general, not only in the problems we are seeing now, but in general with dynamic systems, when you change something, you have one direct effect, but then you have feedbacks within your systems that lead to 
further changes. So this may be the direct effect when you change the interest rate, you increase the, the, the steep uh, at which the price uh, grow. However, the correct solution is this one, C. Why is that? Well, the problem is that if the price remain always higher than the original one, it means that our resources will not be consumed in, in full. Only this is the level of price at which the resource is completely exhausted. But if the price is always higher, because it's higher, then the demand will be smaller. So the, the, if we take A, the price path equal to A, the resource will always be consumed in a smaller amount compared with our original path. So the only possible pathway of price that is compatible with this new steeper slope of, of price, but at the same time where the resource is fully exhausted, B is a pathway that is not possible for the opposite uh, opposite um, reason under B, we have the price that is always lower than our original price and so the resource will be consumed too much. The only possibility is that we have a path, time path of the resource that is uh, steeper, but we have to start with a smaller price and then somehow cross it to get it uh, uh, a price that is higher than our original one. This price is compatible with these two uh, two limits that uh, our uh, two constraints that our model must have. It must ha grow ha uh, with a steeper uh, slope than before, and it must use all the resource. So, so we can see here that this blue is the new uh, new new price path and uh, under this new price path we start increasing compared with our original conditions the resource at the beginning and then we finish it earlier and in a certain way this has a sense because a higher interest rate means a greater impatience so we are extracting more now and later, uh, later on with time. Second case, we are going to consider an increase in the size of the uh, resource stock. So this again is our original, uh, original solution. What will happen? Well, we are having a higher uh, stock. So we are having, we are having something like this, okay? And because we have to consume all this new stock, it means that we have to start from a level of price, maybe it's more nice if I do it, okay? We have to start with a level of price that is lower than before and must be always lower than before in order to hollow consumption of this extra stock of the resource that we have. Conversely, in this case, we are not changing the interest rates. So the slope of the increase of, of the price must be the same as before. It is just starting with a lower uh, and remain lower uh, across each moment of time. And something to notice about this one is that uh, a sequence of uh, new discovering across uh, time will lead to a um, price path that is something like the one draw on this figure. So the idea is that when there is a new discovery, before the discovery, this is not anticipated by the economic agents. So the price grow at the level uh, following the hotelling rules. Then there is a 
discovery in the stock, the price fall down, and then they start again with uh, with this new uh, this new uh, well with the same grow rate as before, but at a lower level, and so on and so on and so on. And what we observe with natural resources very often, it is exactly of this nature. So we can give an interpretation that is not much the hoteling rules uh, because we don't see, we don't observe the hoteling rules for price of natural resources. So we can interpret in this way that the hoteling rule is not wrong. Is It is just that in uh, the real world, we have a continuous uh, set of uh, uh, discovery of new resources that lead to a price of the natural resources that is different than the one that we uh, originally computed when we had assumptions that the stock of the resource never change. Third case, an increase of the demand. Increasing the demand means that at any given price level, the demand instead of being here as originally will be something like here. At this price level will be like this. At this price level will be like this. So what really happens is that the curve of the demand is pushed on the left. And these are some implications because the price cannot remain the same because this price was uh, in uh, equilibrium with the original demand. But if the demand increases, so we have more consumption for any level of price, it means we would use more stock, more, we would need more, more, more stock of natural resource. And because we have the constraint to use exactly the same amount of, of stock, what happens is that the price has to be pushed up, keeping the same, uh, uh, the same grow rate as before, because we are not changing also here the interest rate. So that the uh, extraction of the resource must uh, change in a way that the stock of natural resource, this green line, that is the initial stock, uh, the total stock of the resource must be equal to the new uh, level of uh, uh, resource uh, uh, extracted in total. Fourth case, uh, a reduction in price of uh, the backstop technology. Well, compared with before, when we consider a lower level of K, it means that when we reach, when the price reach, uh, reach this new, new K, uh, the extraction of the natural resource will stop. So if we keep our original price, well, the problem is that here we didn't fully uh, extract the resource that would have been left uh, because this is compatible with uh, only this complete price uh, path is compatible with a complete exhaustion of the uh, of the resource so what we the price has to adapt to decrease because we have to finish it somehow earlier the price need to dec to decrease in order for uh, having a larger, a bigger extraction of the resource that is uh, compatible with the consuming, with extracting the whole amount of, uh, of the resource. Let's go into analyze now an inc the fact of an increase in the cost of extraction of the resource. But before we do that, let's going to make some, uh, um, to make explicit uh, uh, some notations. So uh, at the beginning of this lesson, we call it the, the capital P as the gross price and the lower P, the net price. Then across the, the lessons, we just use a capital P for our analysis because we didn't consider explicitly a extraction cost. Let's now revert to the first notation. So let's gonna be again capital P, the gross price and the, 
the net price of the resource uh, lower p. So uh, let's going to keep the cost of extraction of the resource constant uh, uh, so that uh, um, we call them uh, them c and. Uh, we can then write that the uh, net price is equal to the gross price less the, the cost, uh, the extraction cost. So what we saw in particular was that it was the net price that was uh, increasing following the hotel in rules and in particular that uh, uh, the net price was remaining uh, uh, constant in, in, in real terms when we use it as discount rate, the, the market interest rate. So what we notice, what this implies is that uh, the cost price doesn't have to follow the hoteling rule because it is only this component that follows the, the hoteling rules. So now let's going to see what will happen when we increase the, uh, the extraction cost. So this was our original cost price and this, uh, this measure was the uh, original extraction cost, so we had an uh, original net uh, price of the, of the resource. Um, we noticed that the net price is the one that has to follow the hotel rules, but it is the gross price the one that determines the demand. So the demand of, of the uh, resource depends not from the net price, but from the gross price. So what happened when uh, we increase uh, the uh, extraction cost? Well, the extraction cost, instead of being something like that, will, will increase like that. So the net price has to go at the same rate as before because of the hoteling rules. And uh, here we have the, the gross price. Well, this difference here must be constant as a time, uh, a time zero. Well, the problem with this is the same that we saw before, but if you notice, if this would be true, the new gross price would be always at the level before than the original gross price. Hence, this would imply a, a consumption of the resource that is uh, too high, that will exhaust all the stock uh, before the optimal time. So what will happen is that if you increase the, extract, the uh, extraction cost, we'll have a, so, a sort of a rebound effect where the new, trans, the new, um, the new um, extraction cost will be the, the one in the new situations, but this will be spread between uh, a, a, um, a net uh, price before uh, that is lower than before, but a gross price that at the initial at time zero must be higher than before. In this way, the new gross price is originally higher, but will grow at a grow rate uh, that is uh, lower than before, so somewhere will will cross the original gross price, so that the extraction of the resource given by this new gross price is compatible with uh, the extraction of the resource given by the original gross price. And but the net price will go at the same rate uh, as before. Now. You may think that this is the way this uh, particular uh, uh, chart is drawn. So, but because you see that the distance here between these two net price is much higher than than here. But he really, actually, these are these two lines, these two uh, thin lines, are uh, growing at the same growth rate. And uh, if you don't believe it because you think, oh, it's not well uh, drawn. Well, I implemented this in a spreadsheet in, um, in LibreOffice. You can really see that these two lines here are going at the same, uh, at the same, uh, um, at the same uh, uh, grow, grow rate. And uh, when you consider the rebound effect, when you consider a gross price that 
is equal to the net price plus a constant, you obtain something in the two lines, you, you obtain uh, something, something like that. You will find uh, this, uh, uh, this spreadsheet in the, in the resource uh, folder of the, of the course. So the fact that when we consider the gross effect, so you, you compared with the original gross price, you have a new gross price that is initially higher and go at a slower rate. And uh, the extra so the extraction of the resource is initially lower, but then it will continue for a longer uh, period of time. Well, the fact that the price, the gross price increase, well, how much will depend on how much uh, the extraction cost increase. And you may well have that the new price, the new gross price, because the extraction cost increased so much, the new um, gross price is above our chalk price given by K. In such case, what will happen is, is just that the Extra the resource cannot be extracted because uh, you will have uh, some uh, substitute uh, technology. And so what we say, what we see here is one uh, example of difference between uh, um, technically uh, available uh, resource, that is our initial stock, and economically feasible resource. So the resource is there, but will not be economically feasible to even start to, to extract it.